Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today I have some beautiful French country inspired DIYs for you for fall. I hope that you enjoy them because they were so fun to create. This is part of a collaboration. I'll explain a little bit more about that later in the video. If you like crafting, dupes, DIYs, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. And if you do like anything you see in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up. But let's make some DIYs. With this DIY, I'm just taking this little cutting board from Dollar Tree and I'm going to turn it into a pumpkin. So I'm just painting it orange. I'm just using some pumpkin orange color chalk paint and I'm just gonna do front and back, all the sides, everything. Now, if you wanna do a variation of a different color of a pumpkin or something, feel free to do that. But I really just kind of wanted to make this one orange. And then I'm just taking one of these paint stir sticks. I buy these in a package of, there's several of them for like a dollar or dollar fifty or something. And I just cut one down to about four inches and I'm painting that green for the stem. Now this stencil came from Hobby Lobby. I've actually been really impressed with their stencil section lately. They've kind of upped their game. They've gotten some really cute fun stencils but I thought this kind of had like a fun little French country feel to a little fleur de -lis type thing. So I'm just taping that on and I'm just wanting this to go along the bottom of the pumpkin to kind of give it that little bit of a French country flair. When I stencil, I like to use painter's tape to hold that stencil in place. And then I just lightly tap up and down. And as you can see here, with just a small amount of paint on your brush, you don't want so much that when you st um, like stipple it down, that it's going to like smudge paint underneath the stencil. So you want it to be a very light process. And if you have to go over it a couple of times, do that. And then once I'm done, I just peel it back. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. I thought this looked super cute. So I'm just kind of checking where I want the stencil stem and I'll just use some hot glue to fix that stem on there and then I just kind of push that down and get that put into place and it's starting to look like a pumpkin I think and now I'm going to put a little bit of embellishment on it because I love to do that so I'm just gluing some Spanish moss to the top here and I'll swing that all the way around to the back of that stem and I'll glue it down there so it's all in place and it goes all the way around the stem and then I just add a couple extra little things that I've got here for embellishment I have these are little uh, sprigs off of a boxwood pick that I bought from Ho um, I didn't get it at Hobby Lobby I got it at Walmart their boxwood picks are the best and they're like a dollar 97 and you can do so many projects out of just one of them so i'm just gluing those on i'm just putting this one down because i wanted it to kind of go over the corner of the pumpkin there and so i'll do that now i'm just taking some twine and i wrap that around my finger several times and tie it in the middle to make a cute little twine bow i thought that was cute to have a thicker twine bow like this and then I felt like it needed maybe even something a little extra. So I have this little white uh, pit berry that I have. You can get this uh, Dollar Tree, how, any craft store really. Um, and I'm just going to wrap it around the stem and kind of twist it so it stays on there. And then using just like a paintbrush, I'm just going to wrap each side around that to kind of make the curly cute little vines of a pumpkin there. And I realized that I had done them kind of long. And so I just trimmed them off to what size I want them to be. And then with the little pieces that I ended up trimming off I end up just gluing into the top there so there's a couple of extra little pumpkin vines coming out all around I just liked the contrast of the white pit berry on this and I just thought it looked really cute kind of all over the stem there and that it just kind of was the little touch that it needed I think this turns out beautifully. I love this. You could do this with any sign that you have or plank wood or anything. Nobody would know that this was a cutting board. And I really think that it has such a French country feel to it. And I just love it. Today's video is part of a fall collaboration playlist. Down in my description box is going to be a link for you to click. It will take you directly to the playlist and play through all of these talented creators' videos. They all have fun fall, beautiful fall inspiration DIYs for you. This playlist is hosted every month by Liana DIY, and this month our guest hosts are Crafty Leany, Rustic and Lace DIY, and A Perfect Place to Start. So I'll link their channels down in the description box as well so you can stop by and say hi. If you are coming from from the playlist, welcome. I would love to become crafting BFF, so hit that subscribe button and we can craft together here on YouTube every week. And if you are returning or have been here before, it is great to have you back. Let's make some more DIYs. 
Have you seen these little votives at Dollar Tree? This particular one is a matte white, but it was a little bit dirty on the side. So I'm just gonna freshen it up with a white color of paint here and go all over it. Now you could do this with any votive from Dollar Tree and paint it whatever color, orange, white, green, whatever color you were wanting to do. Now I'm just taking that little spot where your votive would go and I'm, as you saw, I'm just filling it with some hot glue and I'm going to put some Spanish moss all around just to kind of soften the top of that pumpkin to kind of, I'm making it a pumpkin it's a votive, but I'm making it a pumpkin, but I'm just kind of masking where that votive would go. Now I have this little stem from another uh, pumpkin that I used for a different project that I didn't need the stem for, but you could easily use just like a stick from your yard would work totally fine. And I'm just using some hot glue to glue that. And that is it for this particular little pumpkin. And this is a hefty little pumpkin. Now I wanted a second little pumpkin to go along with this. So I'm taking this Dollar Tree pumpkin and I'm just removing the florals off of it. And I found this French newspaper printable online and I'll link that below. And then I have this little kit that kind of ages things here. And I just found it at Joann's, but I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. It's not necessarily necessary to do this, but I wanted to age this and I didn't have any like cream paper to print this newspaper on. I just printed this off just on my regular inkjet printer. And then I'm just going in with this little dabbing tool, as you can see here, and just dabbing it all over. And it's just a different, you can see how aged they all end up looking. It took me maybe three or four minutes per page to do. So it does take a little bit of time, but I was so pleased with how it turned out. So I want to decoupage this to the pumpkin and I'm going for a French country flair kind of French country farmhouse look. And so that's why I thought the French newspaper would be really cute. And I'm going to decoupage this to the pumpkin. So I'm just ripping it down into just, just there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just ripping wherever it feels good, whatever size and get, I just do that to, I end up only using two of the pages and then I still don't use all of the pieces there. But then I'm just gonna do a typical decoupage process. This is just using Mod Podge and it can be glossy, it can be matte, it can be satin, it can be whatever finish of Mod Podge, any will work just fine. And as you can see, I just put the Mod Podge on the pumpkin and then I just take the strips of paper, place them on and then I'll go over the top of the strip of paper with some more Mod Podge to make sure that it is completely sealed and down. Now where the pumpkin has grooves, I take my brush and I'll just kind of dab down in those grooves as I'm putting the Mod Podge on the top and those papers on. So that way it keeps that shape of the pumpkin. And so just kind of do that if you're doing it on a texture, you want those ridges to really show up. And I, I don't know if I show me doing that on here, but I'm just letting you know that I do that so that way those ridges show and it doesn't have any air pockets there. So you just kind of will tap down on those ridges. And this is such a fun and easy project honestly my husband walked in while I was doing this and thought it was so silly like he, he was so confused at what I was doing but when I showed him how it ended up turning out he was like wow that's actually really cool so it was a kind of a fun process and this is just again no rhyme or reason to this you're just covering up that blank space of the pumpkin with your paper and you could do this with any type it wouldn't have to be like this particular French newspaper you could use tissue paper you could print another design out if you have like some wrapping paper or something you want to use fabric and then I try I'm just showing you you could use just a stem off of another pumpkin but I found this perfect little stick down on our farm and so I grabbed it and I just stuck it all the way down through the styrofoam and then I wanted to add a little curly cue here with this little pit berry so I'm just wrapping this around and then to get the curly cue on that, I just wrap it several times around a paintbrush or pencil or something. And that gives it that cute little curly look and then just trim it down to size. I'm loving the look of the Spanish moss for this French country farmhouse look that I'm going for. And in all of the pictures that I looked up of different things, they all used this, or most of them used like the Spanish moss to kind of soften it. So I'm just gluing that around the top of the pumpkin, but underneath where I put that little pit berry. And I think this turns out so cute. I think these both together are adorable. They would look perfect on a tiered tray or to set in a little vignette like this. You could do one without the other very easily, but I just think these turn out adorable. As I was searching for French country ideas, I saw a lot of terracotta pots that kind of had like a very aged look or like a plaster finish to them. So I thought I would try that with this pot that I have and you can use any type of terracotta pot that you might have. I'm just putting some baking soda in this little dish and I'm just adding some chalk paint to it. You probably could use like spackle really easy to do this same texture, maybe water it down a little bit uh, because I felt like it was almost the same type of consistency texture 
as I was mixing this and mix it really good before you add more paint because I've had a, a seen a lot of people do this that say that you'll keep adding paint thinking it's dry and then you end up with it too liquidy so just kind of mix it really good before you decide to add more paint because I didn't like I thought I was going to have to add so much more and I ended up not. Now I'm just going to brush this on to the pot here. And this is what I decided to do first was kind of brush it on like this. But as you'll see in a minute, I found another method that works a little bit better. But I mean, this works fine too. And you can do it as heavy or as light as you want. I end up taking a stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I'll dip it in my baking soda mixture there. And then I will just kind of push up and down. And I'm doing it pretty heavily because I want that heavy texture to it. And then I just want some of the terracotta to show and I could have left more. It just kind of is a matter of personal preference. This was the first time I tried this particular technique. And so, like I said, I think I got a little heavy, but I do like how it turns out. And it was kind of fun to do too. So now I just have a couple of pumpkins. I used this pumpkin in a lot of my displays last year. And then I bought this one at um, Hobby Lobby. I think Dollar Tree has them too. It ended up being like a dollar. And then I'm just going to make a little topiary out of these. So I'm just taking some styrofoam here and I'm just using my putty knife to cut off the edges. And then I will just kind of squish or push that styrofoam down into my little terracotta pot here. This particular pumpkin did come from Hobby Lobby. I have seen them there this year. Like I said, I used it in a few displays last year and I thought it would be perfect for this, but I loved the greenery that it had. So if you're using one that you have on hand or you're using one from Dollar Tree, you might wanna add some greenery around the bottom because that really does soften it. So I stick it in that styrofoam and then I'm just using a wooden dowel and I'm just using that to get the pumpkins through. Now this particular one, I turned upside down to kind of push it through first because it ha I just wanted to have control of where the hole was going. And it has like that around the styrofoam of the pumpkin is like, I don't even know what it is, like a film or something. So I just wanted to puncture that with some control. So that's why I did it that way. Uh, so now I just want to go in between each of these layers of the pumpkin and add some embellishing. So along the bottom, I'm just using some Spanish moss and I'm just sparingly putting this in. So I'll just kind of look where it seems a little bit bare. I'll add a little glue and then I just kind of will push that moss in. And then I have these little picks of hydrangeas and I thought this golden color looked so beautiful. I kind of love the muted tones that this ends up having. So you could totally go with what your personality is on this and do it um, as colorful as you want, as muted as you want. You wouldn't even have to use the flowers. You could just do greenery. I thought like if you like that look of like the feathers that you see in some of the fall arrangements that that would look really cute kind of between the layers. The possibilities are endless and this is the fun part of creating is getting to do what matches your taste and your style. So I'm starting this next layer, putting the Spanish moss all the way around because I wanted that to kind of come out between the different layers. And then I take some boxwood. This is from Walmart, the boxwood pick. And it's $1.97 for a pick. And it's an amazing deal because you can do so many different projects with each one. It comes with a bunch on one pick. So I'll just pull off like six or seven of the little teeny pieces of the pick, little sprigs, I guess we'll call them. And I just glue those around and then intermittently just kind of put in some of those hydrangeas. And I'm just using hot glue between all of the different layers here. And then as I get around, I'll push that top layer of the pumpkin down. I can put a little extra glue there, but there was a lot of glue there to kind of hold it. So moving on to this last layer here, again, you can just see I put the Spanish moss on top. I'm just using these little silicone spatulas so I don't burn my fingers because as if you've worked with Spanish moss and hot glue before, you know it seeps through very easily. And I'll just place that top pumpkin there to kind of see how much I wanna do or how it looks. And then you can see on this layer, I'm just gluing these little sprigs across like this and just kind of doing, instead of doing a number of four around the pumpkin, I just do a number of three. And I do the same thing with those hydrangeas. And then this one, I do put a little bit of glue there to hold that top pumpkin down. And then I just push that down and hold it. Now I did go back and add some boxwood to the bottom layer so it looked cohesive on all of the different layers. Uh, and then just kind of spun it around to make sure that everything looked how I wanted it. If I needed to trim any of the Spanish moss or anything like that but I'm loving this. I think this turns out absolutely beautiful. Some of the ones I saw online that were close to this size were upwards of $80. And some of this was just from pumpkins I had on hand, but I just think this is beautiful and I love how this turns out.
I hope you guys had fun watching me create these French country farmhouse DIYs. They were so fun to create. I love kind of adding a little bit of a different spin onto my normal farmhouse rustic style. I do love the farmhouse style. As you guys know, I am a farm girl. We have a farm and we absolutely love it. And this style just fits with my personality. And it was so fun kind of coming up with a little bit of a different spin on it today. But I love these fall items and they turned out so pretty. So please let me know down in the comments which one you like because I always love to know. Also, remember to click the link in my description box for the playlist so you can see all of the other fun fall DIYs that the other very talented creators have created for you. As always, remember to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.